might do. And he was inspired to found an organization on the Blessed Virgin and to help lay people to put today's gospel into practice. In the Legion of Mary, there is a weekly meeting with rosary and other prayers. But as well as the prayers, each member is obliged to do two hours of substantial legionary work during the week. And it was stipulated that like today's gospel, you always did that work in twos. So I went with an older man to visit a local residential hospital for old people. We went around to the beds of each person, asked them how they were, listened to their problems, and tried to cheer them up if they were sad. When I was in college, I remember going with a female student, I still remember her name, <laughs> Cora, if she's listening. We went on home visitation. It was harder than going to the hospital. We would knock on the doors and say, we are here on behalf of the parish priest. Some people would talk to us at the door, some would invite us in, and some would be interested and some wouldn't. It was a daunting at the beginning. This was why having another person with you was a great support to each other. Our aim was to stir up the faith, make contact on behalf of the parish, and bring back a report to the weekly meeting. It led to some very interesting discussions and some amazing contacts. It helped me a lot to overcome my shyness and helped me to talk about God to all the people. Dear friends, I'm sure some of you also have heard of the neo catechumenate Way. It was founded in Madrid, Spain by a man called Kiko and by a woman called Carmen. They developed a program of formation for baptized Catholics, but Catholics who were never really properly instructed or catechized with knowledge of Christ and the meaning of salvation. It's now spread all over the world. As part of their program, they are invited by today's gospel to go to a city or a town in a two-by-two -two mission project. <coughs> They were to take no money with them and have no place to stay. So here is an example of what happened. My name is Jerry, I'm a married man, and I joined a young seminary called Callum. We arrived at the airport. The community met us and gave us a packed lunch and some maps of the city. We went first to the local church to Mass. When Mass was over, we presented ourselves to the parish priest in the sacristy. We explained to him the mission we had been given, to announce to people the good news. He asked us for credentials, the letter from our bishop, but we had none. His name was Father Michael. <laughs> We told them we were sent with no money, we had no place to stay, and could only trust in the providence of the gospel as the gospel read today. The priest got upset and told us this was impossible as it would be against the law. We left and began our mission. We went to the center of the town to talk with to the people and got very little response. Then we visited some parish priests who were told they were not available. It was a difficult day. Later we met the first priest, Father Michael, <laughs> and one of his parishioners. This time they greeted us well and brought us something to eat, which helped us a lot. 
It also gave us a chance to share our experience with them. That night, we had nowhere to stay, so we went to sleep at the airport. That first day was a good experience. Next morning before Mass at the Cathedral, we met the Bishop, who was happy to see us. He made breakfast for us. He wished us well, and if we need any help, we could call on him. From then on, we visited parish priests, many gave us encouragement and something to eat. One or two of the parish priests were very confused with our mission as we had no letter of recommendation or introduction from our bishop, so they rejected us. We walked a lot. At one point, we needed a ferry. We had no money to board, so we explained to the ferryman our mission and asked if we could go free. He got quite angry. <laughs> he said, this is why the church has money. Because they won't give it away. <laughs> but he brought us across anyway. God softened his heart. Later that day, we were in the city. We were very hungry and tired. And we visited a sheep temple where they gave us a meal. We thanked the Lord for his mercy for that. Then a man took us in for the night. It was a blessing to have a shower. And something to eat. One night we stepped in the streets and were tormented by a drunk man. One day we were hungry and sore from walking. We knocked on many doors announcing the good news. One woman we met said, Sorry, I'm a born again Christian, and closed the door. As we were walking away, she opened the door and asked us if we like something to eat, whereupon she invited us in and fed us. This was really an action of God. So dear friends, reading this testimony makes us realize the gospel is more challenging than it sounds. So let us listen again to the words. The only credentials the apostles had was that they were sent by Jesus. He instructed them, take nothing for the journey, but a walking stick. No food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave from there. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. Being a missionary for Jesus demands trust and courage. We're all called to be that 